kasama at mga kababayan, mga kaibigan, ang ating pinakamamahal na Pangulo, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Kindly sit down. Thank you. Secretary Delvin Lorenzana, General Anio, Vice Admiral Joseph Mercado, Lieutenant General Ray Leonardo Guerrero, the officers and staff of the Philippine Navy, fellow workers in government, my beloved countrymen. I have a very short speech, which is always prepared. But before I read it, I'd just like to communicate with you what is in my heart. There is a strife going on in the Philippines, and I grieve the loss of my soldiers and policemen. It is not easy to read a briefer every day to find out that you're losing a plenty of your best soldiers and the hardworking policemen. As I have warned the country before, that Marami, Marawi was the bedrock of the manufacture of illegal chemical called the Shabu. And uh, there was a time when we declared the state of lawlessness and everything was being watched and raided in central Mindanao. We lost at that time so many soldiers but apparently, most of the Filipinos took it nonchalant. Ang akala siguro ng marami, na I do not have to name them, think it was fun to kill Filipinos. But actually, there was a growing menace. Uh, may I cut short my, uh, to the commanding officer of the troops, Kindly give the tikas pahinga order. Mga kalipunan, dadala, talis. Tikos! And uh, I remember very well that during the first command conference of the AFP PNP, I specifically warned everybody that there is more dark clouds ahead of us. And I was referring to the contamination of the ISIS, which was slowly creeping into our shores. And for all, lahat, Christians and the Moro who were into Shabu, sought sanctuary amongst the terrorists for protection and to ensure the success of their business. So much so that uh, even Manila was already flooded and we had to put an apparatus to stop it. Of course, it would cost lives. You cannot find a war, especially drugs, without losing your men and the enemy. Marami ko, I lose four, five soldiers and policemen every day. And in Marawi now, I am very sad to tell you that we have suffered tremendous losses because we are the invading force and they have been set up there for a long time waiting for the soldiers of the Republic to come. And uh, this is my take. Hihinayaan kasi natin ang druga. So there was a time and until now that the terrorism activities in the Philippines is funded and fueled by drug money. Alam namin na wala masyadong tolong ang ISIS sa Middle East. 
nakukuha namin iyong pinapadala nila by just examining papers and one of those who were really this recipient of a huge amount was a member of the Philippine National Police yung si Noblesa. She was not only in cahoots but she was an active player in the terrorism business. She's the one that was apprehended by the military in Bohol when she tried to extricate uh, the remaining Abu Sayyaf who were on the run at that time. I'm happy to report to you that every one of them went to Bohol ostensibly to so terror have all been natural, neutralized. So I hope that would give them a lesson not to go beyond the shores of Mindanao. And the only reason why I am worried about the Visayas is just it's a very short expanse of the sea. And as a matter of fact, if you live by ship or boat, via Cagayan, by morning time, you are in the Visayas. And uh, it's an island, a group of islands. It's very porous, and you cannot control any Filipino, for that matter, be he a Moro or a Christian, from going anywhere and everywhere. That is the constitutional right of every Filipino in this country. And that is why I mentioned in passing that if there is, if maybe uh, a transfer of venue from Mindanao to the Visayas and to make it easy for the Philippines to challenge the new engagements, I will be forced to declare the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus, not martial law, but yung habeas corpus, so that I can arrest you any time without a warrant. That is just a precautionary measure. I don't think it will happen. I hope it will not happen. And, uh, but if it does, we must be ready. There is no middle ground here. We are not talking about an ordinary police operation. I am worried about an ideology that wants to supplant the Filipino, Filipino way of life. Yan ang problema. They are trying to correct a way of living for everybody. And they do it by killing people invoking the name of God. And that is a very terrible ideology. It does not know anything except to waste human lives. So I give my salute, my respects to the men and women of the armed forces of the Philippines, and the National Police, my salute and my deepest respect. And I grieve with the families, those who have lost their lives. The military in Mindanao runs supreme. Because when you declare martial law, it is really an implicit admission that the police alone or the law enforcement agencies of the country, which does not ordinarily include the military, is called upon to help restore order. Once order is restored, and if upon the advice of the military and the police, who in the first place gave me the reason to declare martial law. While they did not say, you go ahead, President Duterte, they gave me sufficient information 
and I ask them, are we already in the critical level? And there was an almost uni unison and redundant even statement that delegado tayo sa Mindanao. Given the practice of uh, the ISIS in the Middle East of just exploding everything in their hands. Today, Iraq had two in a marketplace and in an ice cream parlor. They lose people by the hundreds every day. We cannot allow it to happen here. We will have to die fighting them. And if I can only join, if you would allow me to join you, I'd be happy to lead you to the mouths of hell. For after all, we have to die sometime. But you can be assured of my help and that the armed forces of the Philippines and the national police will have the priority in acquiring the equipments to help you. Uh, in my time, my speech, kaya ayaw kong basahin, kasi it mentions here of the modernization program and the sea and air assets that we have acquired. But you know, I must be frank, I do not relish uh, bannering out uh, statements like that, for after all this happened, not during my time. Ayaw ko lang magpayabang sa babasahin ko anong nakuha mo ninyo ngayon. At ang makarami po. But in the process, it seems that I would also be pulling my own chair as if I was responsible for this. I will have my time. I have five years. You will acquire more jets, air assets, and boats. And I will make uh, the Philippine Armed Forces a little bit stronger by the time ang shala I go out as president. Uh, <laughs> yun lang po, uh, I will not talk to anybody. I will not talk to the terrorists. We will maintain our present dialogue with the MI and the men and the traditional mainliner. And uh, as for the NPA, Season ordered his uh, soldiers to take an aggressive stand. Alo may gusto lang akong sabihin sa inyo. May mga komunista, and even the MI, MNM. This is a, a 50 years war already. And uh, nakakaiyak kung isipin mo 50 years, wala naman tayong ginawa kung hindi magpatayan. At ang karamihan nating casualty, taga-guberno, on the civilian side, almost about a third of our barangay captains have been liquidated. Alam mo, for all of their bravado, they never occupied even a barangay for 24 hours. And yet when they talk, it's all full of pobris. Akala mo sino? Sison said that uh, he will order his soldiers to engage us. Uh, and here comes a statement that they also want to fight the terrorists. At bakit? Kung manalo ba ang ISIS dito sa Pilipinas, may papel pa kayo sa mundong ito? Huwag tayong magbulahan. You will be marginalized and outcast because your form of government is always anathema to the rest of the religious zealots in this world. Ang... Islam is fundamentally feudal because the Quran orders it to be so. 
and whether you like it or not, however you reconfigure the countries there, and that was the mistake of the Americans. They thought that they could convince itong mga Middle East countries to follow the parliamentarian, the elections. It ain't so. It ain't so. It's purely feudal. And you just have to live with it. Because it is the Quran, which is the constitution of the Islam faith. Kayong mga komunista, you are just wasting your time. You cannot prevail over government of the Republic of the Philippines. Neither can you find a sanctuary under a communist rule. Wag na tayong magbulahan. Yan ang mangyayari sa inyo. I tried to talk to you as a matter of fact, conceding almost nirelease ko halos lahat ang mga priso ninyo. But ang um, well, my only consolation was that most of my release are there, mga, mga sakit na 70 and beyond. May TB, diabetes, hypertension. And so I said, go there and fight again if you want. Pero yung able-bodied nila nandiyan pa sa munting lupa. And if there is a breakdown in the peace uh, and order here because of the participation of the communists in this uh, war against the ISIS, kung gusto ninyong tumulong sa kabila, magpuntahan na kayo lahat. But I am warning the leaders whom I have released and who are now talking to the representatives of my government, do not attempt to come home. I will arrest all of you and throw you to the slammer. Pagkukulungin ko kayo at lahat ng matanda, paaristuhin ko yun ulit. And if, they, uh, if needed, they will just die there inside the prison. Alam ninyo na hindi na kayo makatakbo-takbo. So stop fucking government. Eh, gusto ninyo ano eh. So if I may just read my speech, may I? I congratulate the Philippine Navy for your remarkable contributions in strengthening the foundation of our nation, which is very correct. Your efforts to fulfill your mandate of hold peace and sovereignty in our territorial waters have been remarkable in the past years. And today, you have once again reaffirmed your important role as you support the counter-terrorism efforts against the Maoti group in Marawi City. Your presence in Mindanao, along with the other members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, have made our Kababayans feel more secure at this most delicate and challenging time. I am confident that you will remain committed to your oath to safeguard our shores and shoals against all acts of terror and violence. Let me take this occasion as an opportunity to, all, to assure all of our support for the institutions, initiatives, and needs. Since I assumed office in July, various vessels have been added. Ayoko kasi hindi yan akin. Bayad yan at na-deliver yan sa hindi ko panahon. More acquisitions of vessels and equipment are also underway to better maritime law enforcement, counter-terrorism, and disaster relief operations. I hope that all of you will be more inspired and empowered by these projects. May this event bolster a newfound spirit of courage and patriotism in your hearts so that you will never falter in your mission. By protecting our shores, you are also helping secure our country's future together. Let us continue to serve our beloved homeland with honor duty, and valor. Now, one last issue. Ito bang 
itong mga bobo ng gobyerno. They keep on egging me sa arbitral ruling. Nagsabi nila, anong ginagawa mo sa arbitral? Well, in the first place, yung Americans, we are here. Sila yung gustong mag-liberate siyan. Uh, and yet, you have that injunction of seeking a peaceful dialogue and re resolving the issue in accordance with international law. The arbitrary ruling places the South China Sea in our jurisdiction. But the Chinese has insisted and has made well, well known their stand that it is, uh, this, that is theirs and they will die for it. At ngayon, itong si Carpio, parang gusto niyang lugawin ko that I will pursue the matter, eh, tawagin ko yung mga countries to help us. Ano? Alam mo, nandito si Secretary Lorenzana and also present was uh, Kaitano, was already appointed uh, Foreign Secretary. At yung si Bong ang aide ko. So, we were there in Russia, but we were advised na kinabukasan pa na, I just went the, a day ahead para matulog to overcome the jet lag. But about six hours after my stay, after I landed, na tanggap ko na yung uh, balita sa attack sa Marawi. Kaya, I pleaded that I could only, if I could only talk to Putin, President Putin, even for 10 minutes, just to say hello and goodbye and thank you. I received word that he was from another region. You know, Russia is a big country. Part of its struggles in Europe and part of it is really in Asia. Yan kalaki yan siya, but he was somewhere else. But we received word that he was flying in to talk to me. And indeed, we had that occasion with me, but uh, si, uh, Secretary Lorenzana, pati si Caetano. Pati doon sa bilateral. Hindi na ako nagdaloy-daloy, but arbitral. I said that China Sea is ours. I'm going to dig oil there. Nandiyan sila. Wala na yung arbitral ruling. No, that is ours. I will dig oil there. And not in so many words. Not really war. But, you know, yung diplomatic and President Xi Jinping is very good at that. Parang ah, gano'n na, wag, kasi kaibigan na tayo ngayon in the raw translation, e bakit lugawin mo pa? Pag pumasok ka dyan, magkagera pa tayo, there will be trouble. And if you are an idiotic naive, Ano sabihin trouble? Di trouble di gera. Then, ako ang, ang problema nito, when it was being constructed seven years ago, the news papers in the Philippines, Time Magazine, Newsweek, were awash with pictures that there was something abrowing there that there were constructions being made. Nandiyan yung seventh plate, uh, fleet, rather. Uh, Nandiyan yung ating navy. Bakit hindi sinabi ni Carpio pati ni Inoy na yun? Sige, puntaan ninyo, pigilan ninyo. Then they allow the construction to bloom. Now it is a gun, it's almost a gunnery thing there. May missile na, Gusto nila ako magpunta kalkalin ko yung ano. I went more than the other. Sabi ko, huwag na yung arbitrary atan. Sabi ko, sa Jijig Pen, kami ang kanila. Ah, I will dig oil there. Sabi niya, no, 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 do not do that. No, sabi ko, it's our. Wala nang padaloy dalo yung arbitral, arbitral. Diretso. Kung magawa nila yan, believe na ako. Well, si Carpio, daldal ng daldal, no, wala namang ginagawa noon. So gusto niya, punta ako doon sa UN for the enforcement. Ganito yan eh, usapang lalaki ang away. 
Sabihin ko sa kanya, umalis ka dyan, akin yan. E sabihin na niya, usapang lalaki, e pwede mo, bakit ako alis dito? Amin to. Sabi, umalis ka. Sabi, ayoko. O anong gusto mo? Ganun yan eh. Ang sabi, dialogue, uh, peaceful resolution, when will it end? Hanggang kailan ako may kipag-usap? Hanggang yung saman, lulubog na. I was not joking when I was lecturing to, I am a man of sarcasm. Have you not noticed that? Na ang nagsabi rape-rape. Sinabi ko ma-rape kayo, ang sundalo, I was, ako ang magsagot sa inyo. Because as commander-in-chief, I hold responsible for everything and anything that is done as a consequence of Barcelo. I and I alone will be criminally responsible. Kaya iyong salita ko, ikonekta ninyo. Eh, pag itong mga barinig ng rape, kagaya ni Chelsea, she slapped me for the, the rape joke. I was not joking. I was being sarcastic. You listen to the speech. I do not laugh at my own jokes. Then sabihin ko sa kanya, when your father, the president of the United States, was screwing Levinsky and the girls there in the White House, how did you feel? Did you slam your father? O kayong mga Amerikano, kayong mga press, sinong kalaban ng mga Amerikano? Wala pa namang gira dito, matagal na. Eh, not even Korea nagpapotok araw-araw na. Ang kalaban ng mga Amerikano, pag nagpunta dito sa Pilipinas, yung mga p*** yan, anong ginagawa ng re-rape? O, oh, kayong mga Pilipino niya, ah, ba, ah, anong, anong pinag sa, what are you doing? Pinag-rape, tapos bayaran, bigyan ng visa sa buong pamilya. Wala na. It is a crime actually committed by soldiers, mostly Americans in Okinawa, in Japan. But we never heard of a Filipino. I'm just warning them that anything they do, I have to answer for it. But I take full responsibility for your kagaguhan. Sarka, sarcastic ako magsalita. Binabaliktad ko yung, eh, sabi nga ni Lakson, rhetoric. Eh, laking bugoy ako eh. Mga p***** mo, Adre, pag nag-rape ko ng rape dyan, p***** ako masasabit. Ganun ako magsalita. But I was not joking, I was being sarcastic. Kaya, kayong mga Amerikano, si Chelsea, be careful because you live in a glass house. Ulitin ko nga, I repeat, when President Clinton was f***ing what was your statement or your reaction? Mahirap yung tao na tao po. Para bang binubog-bog dito ako sa kritisi, ay insultuhin ko rin kayo. Mga Amerikano, ganun. Ilang Pilipina, yung bakla, pinatay nila. Kung na pwede mo naman sana isipain lang, eh, tulak mo sa labas ng kwarto. You did have to kill the transgender. Kaya dandahan kayo kasi... And I have a story to tell uh, you guys when we have the command conference. Hindi ako atat na atat dito, dito, Pogo President. If you feel that I cannot be of service to the Filipinos, and you want another one better, if you can find one, feel free to tell me. Maraming salamat po and congratulations to your anniversary. I know that yeah, we, are, we continue to lose men. We will just have to bite the bullet and fight for our country because this is the only 
country that we have. Mabuhay ang Marines at mabuhay ang mga sailors ng Philippine Navy. Mabuhay kayong lahat. Salamat po.